yesterday we started doing analysis on noise margin we didn't complete it but we derived expressions for the vil and vih okay what is vil and vih we look at it now v out versus v in this is my transfer characteristic v in v out right so we said that the point at which the slope right becomes minus 1 is a point of interest because to the left of it on the lower side the gain is less than 1 which means any noise will get killed will get attenuated and the output will be robust and stable at that particular value right so therefore the point where the gain becomes minus 1 is of importance g equal to minus 1 right and what is g d v naught by d v in the gain right so we needed to identify these points so the point where this this is v i l v i h corresponding y axis value is v o h for v i l because it is an inverter and v o l right. So, we wanted to find these points in a short channel transistor because it has channel length modulation all that the expression is quite complex. Therefore, we made an approximation and said that we will find the point when v in equal to v out equal to v m the trip point right v in v out equal to v in equal to uh, line and this point is v m comma v m. Then we said that we will take the slope out here and just extrapolate with that slope right and see where it intersects my thing. So, the first point is V O H is actually nearly V D D and V O L is nearly ground. This is true whether it is a real transistor or uh, the ideal case or the real case it does not matter right. So, V O H if you are going to approximate as V D D is not a big problem. So, we can take the intersection and this point we said we would call as V I L. Similarly, this particular point we would call as V i h. Of course, there will be slight error, but it is a very reasonable error within 5 percent or so we, we get the answer right. This is the basic idea because the expressions are complex ok. You can always try to derive it, but it is just going to get very cumbersome ok. So, then we said that you can calculate the gain at. So, you calculate the gain at v in equal to v out equal to v m right. How do you do this? You have to basically do d v out by d v in right at v in equal to v out equal to v m. Of course, both n MOS and p MOS are going to be assumed to be in velocity saturation region in this particular at this particular point v m. We already did this calculation earlier right. Using this, we were able to calculate the levels v i l and v i h. So, what was v i l? It was v m right. Uh, what was that plus term? Can you remind me? Huh? V m plus v m by g is it? V i l. V D D minus V M by G and V I H uh, minus V M by G is it? Huh? Yeah, makes sense because G is a negative gain minus minus will become plus. So, V I H is to the right of V M 
and vi l will be to the left of thing. So, this is the expression that we got. Now, still <coughs> this does not tell us anything about the noise margin that is what our discussion started with. So, let us now see what these values mean. What is V i L? It is the threshold voltage right not to be confused with transistor threshold it is that particular threshold voltage below which everything will be treated as a logic 0. V i H is the threshold voltage above which everything will be treated as a logic 1 ok that is the most important thing. So, now let us assume in the limiting case that I am applying V i L here. What will be the output of this inverter? No, no. Go back to this curve. Ah, if the input is V i L, then the corresponding output is V o H. By definition, because that is the y axis value, right. Therefore, this has to be V o H, right. Now, I want this output to be recognized as a logic high. What is the condition on the second inverter? This is I1, I2. What is the condition on the second inverter for this VOH to be recognized as a logic high? Correct. VOH should be greater than VIH, which means that if there is a noise pulse up to this magnitude, the difference of VOH and VIH, it should be fine. My VOH is here, right? My VOH is somewhere here. My VIH is somewhere here, right? This is VOH, this is VIH. VOH is above VIH. As long as that is done, taken care of, it is a logic high, no problem. That means I have this much room for noise to actually you know cause this voltage to come down that much I can tolerate naturally this is called the noise margin on the high side. So, noise margin high is n m h is v o h minus v i h. Okay. Now, if this is V i h, what will the output of the inverter be? I 1, V o, V o l. What is the condition for V o l to be recognized as a logic low for on inverter 2? Mm. V o l should be less than V i l. Correct. So, this is my V i L and somewhere here is my V o L. Therefore, on the lower side I can tolerate a positive noise pulse as long as it is below V i L I am fine. So, this much is my noise margin on the low side. So, N m L is V i l minus V o l. Okay. So, now can you substitute these values? Of course, V o h very close to V d d. Correct. So, we can make the substitution that V o h is nearly V d d. So, this is in black, right. So, this is V d d minus V i h. What is that value? V m minus V m by G. <coughs> right. Similarly, what is noise margin low? V, <coughs> v o l is what? Yeah, 0. So, this is just V i l. So, this is what we derived again V m plus V d d minus V m by G. V d sorry V m 
plus VDD minus VM by G. Now, sanity check, ideal inverter, what is G? Yeah? Infinity, what should the noise margin be? On the high side, VDD minus VM, right? Because for the ideal inverter, for the ideal inverter, the VTC is going to look like this, right? It starts abruptly at VM, it will fall. This is VDD, VM. The noise margin on the high side is going to be VDD minus VM. On the low side, it is just going to be VM as long as I have that much room and that is exactly what we get when we substitute G equal to infinity. So, the expressions we have got are in alignment with our intuition as well, ok. Any questions here? Yeah. Yeah, because they are actually very, very close to VDD and ground. I mean, you can calculate the exact value, but they will be really, really, really close. That is true, the approximation method does that, but even otherwise, VOH and VOL will be very close. You do a simulation and see, for example, find out where the slope goes to minus 1 and see what VIL and VO, VOL are, VOH are. VOH will be very, very close to VDD, right? For reasonably high VDD, this will be true, okay? Yeah. So, now let me see how far this approximation that we have made, how far can I take it? Can I apply the same logic to a long channel device? Think about the approximation that we did. Tell me if I can make this approximation for a long channel device. How would this approximation look for a long channel device? First of all, how will the VT, VTC of this long channel device look like? Rather, what will be the slope at the trip point? Huh? What is the slope G at the trip point? More than, no, no, I need an, I need a number. Huh? So, we, we derived this yesterday. Suppose it was a long channel device, right? At V in equal to Vm equal to V out, Idsn is what? Half of Kn prime Wn by L into Vm minus Vtn the whole squared. Idsp is what? half of Kp prime Wp by L, both are in saturation, Vm minus Vdd minus Vtn by Tp whole square. Do any of these currents depend on V out? No. So, what will be the slope? There is no lambda, that is the whole point, right? So, we derived an expression for the gain, 
right if you remember yesterday and we said it is 1 by 2 lambda n assuming that lambda n equal to minus lambda p if now lambda n is 0 what happens to the gain goes to minus infinity right basically or it goes to plus infinity why why are you saying minus infinity there is a minus yeah right anyway the it basically becomes a vertical line at that point this does not mean that the voltage transfer characteristics of a long channel device inverter is an ideal case it does not mean that long channel VTC is like this that is not true what actually happens is this guy is like this it comes now at this V in equal to V out here it will be a straight vertical line the slope will be infinity okay then it will again go out like that. So, the conclusion is if I do this same analysis and approximation for a long channel device I will get this blue curve and my VIH and VIL will both collapse to VM. If I make the approximation right then here VIL equal to VIH equal to VM clearly this is not true right. So, the approximation that we did works only for a short channel device when there is non-zero channel length modulation that is the limitation of the approximation that we have made earlier. So, this guy here works only when CLM is greater than 0. This is the limitation that you should understand. When CLM is there, it is a reasonable approximation because you get a slope at that point, you extrapolate and it works reasonably well, but you cannot do this for a long channel device. Okay. So, now question is how do I evaluate these noise margins for a long channel inverter? Luckily, it turns out the expressions for current are themselves not so complex as it is for a short channel device and therefore, we can do it from first principles. Okay.